So I'm going to play some videos that I've collected, some from different groups on the public social media platforms, and some that I created myself and kind of blended them together. I want people to try and understand that in, in the right environment, pigs can have an enjoyable and happy life. However, in the wrong environment, um, they can have a, a fearful, sad, horrible life. And if you put yourself in their position just for a moment, every time you see this footage, you wouldn't want this done to you. So we have some farm sanct sanctuary footage um, where animals have been saved, they're free, they have friends, they know the people that work there, they know the activists and they bond and they actually answer by name, which is pretty cool. Um, we have some footage from a factory farm. We have some footage from a different country where in, in this country they kill their own animals rather than go into the store. Um, and then we have some videos of how to be an activist at a vigil. So I'm going to let them play. Um, give me a second here. And uh, in these short videos, you're going to see some footage that shows them enjoying themselves. It shows the pigs in an environment that I don't believe is even fit for me. I think it's enslavement, it's cruelty, and to humanely kill someone that doesn't want to die is a lie. The word humane means to show compassion, benevolent. The word slaughter means to kill. So how can you lovingly kill someone that doesn't want to die? So I'm going to go ahead and play the videos and from all different angles all around the world. And um, if you want to speak up and become an activist, please look out for the end here. I'm going to show you, see my background here. I'm going to show you how you can sign up and join Animal Save Movement. It's important that we do visuals and bear witness for these animals. Uh, so thank you for watching. I'm going to play the video now. Some deserving research. Oh. <laughs> that was my finger, I'm sorry. Now you went to Wolverhampton. Huh? <laughs> Alright, hey, baby. Hello. So these two little piglets uh, rescued recently they're on the farm sanctuary today enjoying the cold brisk morning aren't they the cutest Are the, are the boys or girls? Both females. Both females. Tulip and Lily. What you say the names were? I believe it's Tulip and Lily. Tulip and Lily. Named after a flower. Look, it's safe. Your name is Tulip. Say hi to Tulip and Tulip and Lily. These are two little baby girls that were recently rescued and now they're living on a farm sanctuary. Unfortunately, they're not with the mother. What such angels, yes. You've got little nipping teeth. Babies, yes. So if you look at the piglets, you see they've had the tails removed. They do that in the meat industry. So when they're in uh, captivity, they don't bite each other. 
and uh, they do actually do that with no anesthetic, just cut it, the tails right off. <coughs> they cut all the teeth out of the tooth. It's the cruelest world ever. You want to come home with me? These two little piglets uh, share a pen. Oh, all these little sentient beings. They all came outside to see us. <laughs> Life is so precious. Everyone deserves to live. Oh. So thank you for watching. So what you just watched there was Lily and Tulip that were recently rescued from a slaughter truck. They live happily now on a farm sanctuary with lots of uh, other sentient beings and are well taken care of. Her. Just so you know, they'll probably enjoy a full life of um, enjoyment, fun. They'll, they'll, Tulip and Lily will make friends probably with the other animals, residents. Um, this next video I want to show is, uh, I call it, Imprisoned. The Imprisoned. Imagine if this was you. In a crate no bigger than you. Can't turn around. You can get a small dose of grain food every day, and maybe some drops of water. This is enslavement of innocent animals. These animals are forcibly impregnated constantly, and the babies, the children, taken away every year. Can you imagine living like this? You buy meat, this is what you're paying for. Supply and demand, you're causing this problem. Go vegan and stop it. By not choosing to contribute towards animal suffering, Morning. See the little tail going? Are you happy? Yeah, I wouldn't drink it. You might get some mud on your snout. <laughs> hey, big, hey, big guy. friend how you doing so how to all the animal activists <laughs> oh, nice baby oh you want a belly rub is that what you want do you really think I'm gonna rub your belly right now Look, it's, it's, it's got cemented with cake, my friend. <clears throat> you can have a back rub, how about that? Is Curly chasing you? Curly, what are you doing with that piggy? Hey, what are you doing, Curly? What are you doing, girl?
There you go. Look it right in there. Hi there. I'm a pig and here's my story. You might expect that my life is like the pig in the movie Babe, full of playful moments with other animals, but that's not my story at all. My life started out rough and it's only gotten worse. You see, just like nearly all pigs in the United States, I was raised on a factory farm. I was born on a hard, wet, urine-soaked floor with my nine siblings. My mother was confined in a farrowing crate so tight that she couldn't even turn around. She'd already gone through five pregnancies by the time I was born, and she's never had a single moment outdoors. When I was just a few days old, I was grabbed up by one of the humans. I squealed and kicked, but couldn't get away. He took some sharp clippers and cut off my tail, leaving only a tiny stub. Then he cut open my scrotum, tearing out my testicles. Next, he forced open my mouth and cut the ends of my two teeth. And then he cut deep notches into my ears. All of this happened without a drop of anesthetic. I felt every agonizing cut and tear. And my case wasn't the least bit unusual. This is what's done to every piglet raised on a factory farm. It wasn't long after that, when I was only three weeks old, that I was taken from my mother. She screamed as we were carried away, but it was no use. That was the last time that I saw her. I was taken to another building, and for the next seven weeks, I was stuck in a terribly crowded pen with more than 20 other pigs. We walked around on slated concrete, and our waste fell through into a huge pit dug under the building. You can imagine the horrible smelling fumes from all the manure and urine building up. After a few more traumatic location transfers, I was given a shot of something called ractopamine, which caused my body to start putting on more muscle. After five painful months on this earth, I already weighed more than 200 pounds. I was in terrible health. I had trouble breathing because the ammonia-choked air had eaten lesions into my lungs, but I could still walk when the men came, yelling at us, stabbing us with electric prods as we were hurried onto the truck. There were little holes in the side of the truck, and I had moments when I could see humans, warm in their neighboring cars, peering back into my eyes as we were trucked through the freezing cold. And that brings me to now. The truck just pulled up to a building, and I'm terrified. Each of us knows we've arrived at a bad, bad place. All the pigs around me are panicking. I feel a shock as a man shoves an electric prod into my back, and I fumble forward off the truck, landing in a pen. The gates open and I desperately try not to go through it, but the men with prods force us forward into a chute. I land in a small chamber with several other pigs. The chamber lowers down and our air turns to noxious gas. I frantically try to climb out and reach fresh air, but the horrible gas is inescapable. It hurts to breathe. We're all in agony trying to get our noses up as high as possible to reach breathable air. One by one, we collapse in this gas chamber. After he passes out, his body is hoisted into the air by his leg and his throat is cut. The blood and life drains from his body. He's disemboweled, skinned, and then butchered for bacon and other cuts of meat that soon make its way to the grocery store, neatly packaged in cellophane with no indication of the life it once was. Too few of us consider the source of our food. Please remember that when we eat bacon, ham, sausages, and other pork products, our food had a face and a story. And that story didn't have a happy ending, a happy middle, or a happy beginning. We can help create a better story. We can create a story in which humans treat other animals with kindness rather than cruelty. By choosing vegan foods, 
we can prevent unimaginable amounts of cruelty and suffering and help build a kinder world for us all. So this next video is um, kind of the opposite of the last one. This is a, a family that I call, I use the word conditioned because of the culture and tradition. And um, they treat pigs just a little differently than that last video. And uh, so I'll just play this. I call this video tortured animal torture including tail twisting punching pushing grabbing by the ears and electric shocks is not just limited to the USA all around the world this abuse happens daily Watch how this family push and shock this poor pig into a tiny cage. This is not how pigs are meant to be brought up behind bricks or in sheds. Forced into tiny cages with sticks while transported. Sometimes it's so obvious to see evil people, you can actually see the words on their shirt. Bigger than Satan. Slammed to the floor. Nowhere to run. Pulled by the tail, twisted. No one can hear a voice. Surrounded by demons. I can only imagine the fear if that was me. Grabbed by the ears and then by all fours. Shaking with fear. You can see the fear in her eyes. As they walk around her. Sniggering. Laughing. Team. It's so bad. I'm sorry that you even had to watch that, but that's the cold, hard truth. The world has been conditioned to think that animals are here to serve us. They're here to be killed for food. That's far from the truth. The animals are here with us. If you spend some time, maybe go to a local farm sanctuary and hang out with some animals, you'll see what I mean. If you have a, a companion animal at home, maybe a dog or a cat, try looking, looking at your dog in the eyes and making that connection because there's someone inside there. And it's the same with pigs, cows, chickens, but all animals have a sentience being of someone inside them, an individual. So killing animals like this is firstly disgusting, it's wrong. Whether you do the killing yourself or pay someone else to do it, they're both just the same. So snap out of it, come on. Go vegan. The word vegan, by the way, means to live a lifestyle that causes the least amount of harm to all life. by eating a plant-based diet. Okay, so I got one more video for you. 
this is some this is a video at a slaughterhouse where animal activists gather to do something called vigils if you've never been to a vigil i'm just going to go ahead and play this one for you now i call this video the vigil Thank you for watching today. So from what you've seen there, our purchasing choices have side effects. An animal's life is depending on whether you choose a plant-based product or a cruelty product. It, it, it's hard to go vegan when you're just thinking about yourself and your taste and your pleasure, um, but it's actually easy to go vegan when you put yourself in the animal's position, even if it's just for a moment. So I challenge people that are thinking about going vegan today, I challenge you, for, for every day you're thinking about going vegan, animals are still suffering daily because of you in your name. So you've got an opportunity today to go vegan and, you know, just do it and align your morals with your actions and, um, It'll be the best choice you ever made. I'm sure that animals will think that too. So I, as promised, I said I was going to share my screen here and show people how to join the Animal Save movement. And if you can see now right here, this is uh, the savemovement.org. And when you get to this page, you can just click on the Join Us button. And you have a choice here. You, you can search to see if there's a chapter in your area or if there isn't one in your area, you can actually create your own and become an organizer. Um, it's pretty simple. You need to follow, fill out this application form here and uh, someone will get right back to you. And uh, there's many different groups just like this. Uh, for example, Anonymous for the Voiceless, um, PETA, 
um, direct action everywhere. And that's just a few of them. So thank you for watching today. I, I hope that this these videos has give you a better understanding of words like humane and slaughter. They don't go together and they're not meant to go together. There's no humane way to die. So thank you everyone for uh, watching. Being there for the animals, even if you can only go to one, one time, I, I highly recommend it because experiencing firsthand what those animals go through will take you to a place in your journey whether you're vegan, whether you're not yet vegan, whether you're already an activist, it's going to propel you to a place that, you know, you probably would not be able to get there without this experience. So I highly recommend at least attending a vigil once. activist because if not me then who else I am an animal rights activist because animals need our help because if I were the one being exploited and abused I would want somebody to be speaking up for me I am an animal rights activist because I stand and fight for what is right because I'm a human being animals feel pain and animals want to live just like us I'm an animal rights liberation activist because I believe that being vegan is the least that we can do. I am an animal liberation activist because I can picture the way the world would look if everyone who cared about animals were an activist. Because I believe in the world where none are oppressed. I'm an animal rights activist because being vegan just isn't enough. With activism, we can change the world for the animals who are suffering. They have been tortured, abused, starved, raped, and even murdered. The most innocent and vulnerable beings on the planet are suffering every single second. We need to speak up for them the way that we would want to be spoken for. They've done nothing wrong to deserve to be eaten, worn, or used in any way. We must not be silent. The animals need you. 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 The animals need you.